All right, everybody, welcome to the show. We got a fun one today. So uh, there's actually a bombshell news story, which isn't getting much coverage, but uh, Jack Smith, the guy who's doing the investigation into Donald Trump over the classified documents, apparently he's also investigating January 6th related stuff, which I didn't know. My impression was that there was a case in Georgia that's still open against Trump on January 6th related stuff and like trying to steal the election and the fake electors and the find me 11,000 votes and all that stuff. Apparently, Jack Smith is also looking into that, and that could end up being devastating for Trump, especially since uh, this new news just came out, which is incredible. So we're, I'm going to lead with that in just a second. We also have, have Alex Jones making an appearance on the PBD podcast, and it was glorious. Classic Alex Jones. Who knows what substances he was on, but uh, he describes in detail demon attacks. Real life demon attacks that apparently his friends have witnessed or been the victim of. So we'll talk about that. We also have RFK and Bill Maher discuss their fawning love and adoration for capitalism. Um, and then later on in the show, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert apparently want to rip each other's throats out. And uh, it got heated on the floor of Congress. I mean, I don't know if I want to say they almost came to blows, but let's just say the body language was uh, questionable at best. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. And by the way, remember, guys, shameless plug. Everybody click like, click subscribe, um, all that fun stuff. Click that bell icon so you get a notification every single time a video drops. It helps the channel tremendously in the algorithm. You know, the algorithm is not that fair to political content. And by the way, um, go and drop my uh, beautiful, lovely, intelligent wife a subscribe over on Breaking Points because they're this close, un poquito close to a million subscribers. So just get them over the edge there. Um, and of course, massive congratulations to them. So, oh, and also, let me just say, go check out last week's Crystal Kyle and Friends because uh, Crystal and I did a debate with Emily Jashinsky of the Counterpoint Show. She hosts that with Ryan Grimm. And she's relatively conservative on the culture war. So we got into a bunch of very beefy issues. I think we have a clip or two posted on the Secular Talk YouTube channel for everybody. But go check out the whole podcast because it was basically like an hour and 30 minute debate. And it was definitely fun. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. So um, this is kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. I really don't see many people talking about it. And I don't understand why. Okay. So CNN sources are saying that Jack Smith got Trump's fake electors to testify against him. Now, I already thought Trump was in quite a bit of trouble with the classified documents mess. The only thing that's holding me back from really pounding the gavel on uh, this guy basically being dunzo is the fact that there's a pro-Trump judge who's overseeing the case. That's questionable. Also, there is no, like, minimum. There is no mandatory minimum for the list of 37 crimes. So in theory, you could have Jack Smith say, hey, I don't want to tear the country apart. I fear we're going to have a civil war, so I'm not going to go for jail time. So there's wiggle room for this to end uh, in an anticlimactic way. However, the evidence to this point is pointing in the direction of, look out, Don, look out. Our big wet boy is in a whole bunch of trouble. Well, now it just got even more serious. So here's what they say. CNN sources say special counsel Jack Smith has secured the testimony of at least two fake electors in the case against ex-president Donald Trump by offering them limited immunity. Reporting teams for CNN have recently broken several scoops related to the 37 count indictment against Trump on Espionage Act, Act charges. But on Friday, the team of uh, Catlin or Caitlin Polence, Sarah Murray, Zachary Cohen, and Casey Gannon dropped a scoop in yet another roiling Trump case being spearheaded by the special counsel. In a brand new exclusive, the team writes that Smith had made a deal in the election interference investigation against Trump. Special counsel Jack Smith has compelled at least two Republican fake electors to testify to a federal grand jury in Washington in recent weeks by giving them limited immunity, part of a current push by federal prosecutors to swiftly nail down evidence in the sprawling criminal investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The testimony described to CNN by people familiar with the situation comes a year after uh, a, a year, excuse me, of relative dormancy around the fake electors portion of the investigation. And as a parade of related witnesses are being told to appear before the grand jury with no chance for delay, that activity could signal the investigators are nearing at least some charging decisions in a part of the 2020 election probe, sources added. It also comes just as the special counsel's office filed charges against former President Donald Trump for his handling of classified documents. Okay, so when it came to the day of January 6th, Trump was giving a speech and he was like, we, we got to take our country back by being strong. We can't be weak. We have to be strong. Everybody be strong and go march to the Capitol. 
So there was definitely some implications there of like, hey, I'm not saying go attempt a coup or an insurrection, but if you happen to attempt a coup or an, or an insurrection, nobody's mad at you. So there's a little bit of that going on. But I always said, vis-a-vis -vis that portion of the investigation, I don't know if you can get Trump on any specific crime. Because he really covered his tracks. He talked out of both sides of his mouth. He very famously came out after the uh, January 6th riot had started and said, we love you guys. You're beautiful. I understand why you're mad. But at the same time, uh, you should go home and go in peace, respect our police officers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he, get, like, he spoke out of both sides of his mouth to give himself plausible deniability that he didn't actually support what was going down. So it was always going to be an, an uphill climb to get charges on that front. However, in terms of trying to overturn the election, probably the clearest example of crimes includes the phone call in Georgia where he said, find me 11,000 votes. And also, and I don't, I don't even know how many of you guys remember this, but they literally set up a fake elector scheme. I believe Giuliani was spearheading this as well, where they just did like, a, you know, a counter uh, election conclusion where it was like, actually, we did win and we have our own electors right here. And this is like totally legal and totally justified and no problem whatsoever. And it was like they put on this show or this pageant and the whole thing is a crime, right? Because you lost the election. We know you lost the election. There's over 60 court cases that say that. And here you are pretending like you won the election. And what, you think this is going to have the, you know, the legal force of the law on your side here? If you do, it's not going to happen, right? But the whole thing was super sketchy at best, probably criminal at worst. And it looks like they got some of the people on the fake electors panel to come out and say, okay, we'll testify against them if you promise that, you know, our asses aren't going to end up in jail. Wow. Wow. So... I, I was skeptical you'd be able to get Trump on anything related to January 6th. I'm still somewhat skeptical on it, but this is further than I ever thought we'd get on this front. And like I said, I had no idea Jack Smith was looking into January 6th stuff. I thought he was just limited to classified documents and obstruction of justice and that particular, you know, a bunch of crimes that Trump committed. So they continue here. In addition to Smith's investigation, Trump could soon face indictments from election crimes prosecutor Fannie Willis. Willis had, has signaled possible indictments of the former president in Fulton County, in Fulton County's grand jury investigation of Trump's effort to overturn election results in Georgia, which experts believe are likely coming in August, that's also the time frame Trump's documents trial is scheduled to start, although it's likely to be delayed. Another thing that I fear, guys, is um, just the timing of this all, right? I mean, you could have him dead to rights on a number of crimes, which I, by the way, already think they do vis-a-vis -vis the classified documents, and it's like... Well, what if, the, you know, you don't actually get uh, a conviction or sentencing until well after the primary or well after the general? Homeboy could already theoretically be back in the Oval Office by the time things have moved on this front. And as you all know, a president cannot go down on a criminal charge. The best you can do with a president is impeach, right? Now, Trump got impeached twice, but it was just through the House. It didn't get through the Senate. So it wasn't like he was impeached and removed. He was just impeached. Um, but... I don't know, man. This stuff is wild. I I'm shocked he's looking into January 6th stuff. I'm shocked he was able to get some Trump electors to flip on him. So you, you never want to pound the gavel when it comes to Trump because the dude apparently has more than nine lives. He has roughly 74 different lives. But uh, the fact of the matter is this is a worse situation than he's ever been in. Russiagate was absolute peanuts compared to what we're looking at here. And um, I am, if you can't tell, absolutely floored and shocked that some of the fake electors flipped on him, and that may have wide-ranging consequences. I'll be very interested in seeing what the specific charges are about, you know, against these electors or what they're saying against Trump. Like, what exact crime are you going after him for? Is it some sort of, like, state-level uh, obstruction of a, a government proceeding? And what's the, you know, how much time is associated with that, if any at all? Or is it a more serious charge, you know, I don't want to say insurrection or, or, or coup attempt or whatever, because I don't know if there's a, you know, uh, I don't know what the law is and how it spells it out on that front. But let's hope it's some uh, beefy charges because he definitely committed a plethora of crimes. Um, but it's getting interesting. It's getting interesting. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. Um, I really thought it was only Georgia looking into the January 6th stuff. But apparently it's Jack Smith, too. And we've already seen Jack Smith's work. And it's pretty goddamn thorough. Um, and remember, the federal conviction rate is also 99.6%. So it's not boding well for, for Trump here, but we'll see what happens. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. 
click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.